What's the purpose of life? What is happiness? <laughs> that, that requires a whole semester to talk about at UPC. If the purpose of life is just to, all right, you're a, you're a kid now, and you don't know um, what you do. You just go for primary school, in the high school, and then you, afterwards you, want, you, know, you have been forced by your parents to get a good education, and somehow you graduate, and then you say, okay, you go in university, and then and then later you get to know your, your partner, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, and then you get married. And once you get married, you've got to have kids. And once you have kids, then you have to go through the whole process of life. That's what we call zamzara. Is that really the purpose of life? The purpose of life is just to wait for death to come out? What's the purpose of life? Um, well, some people say, I don't, I don't know what's the purpose of life. That's, that leaves that to philosophers and, and psychologists. Why do we have to worry about the purpose of life? Just eat, drink, play, play be merry, and, uh, and just be happy. By the way, you don't even know, or we don't even know, or we're not clear on what is quote-unquote happiness. To most people, they don't even know what happiness is all about. Some people don't even get into that. They just live the life that everybody, you know, satisfaction of, of senses. Uh, what is happiness? As long as my eyes like to see things, my eyes want to see, my ears like to listen to things, my ears like to, to listen to, my, my, my tongue tastes food that I like, my smell, smell fragrance that I like, that's happiness. Then when you come to think of that definition of happiness, does it mean that satisf happiness is just a satisfaction of your senses, of your eyes, your ears, your nose, your tongue, your body, or is happiness just a stimulation of the hormones when you have this relationship between a man and a woman? Is that what happiness is all about? When you start to find out meaning of happiness, meaning of life, you're already at a higher level than other people who don't even know about it. They're just in search of material, in search of wealth, reputation, relationship, marriages, you know, all that. Because you are in the process of seeking the purpose of life. Why did we come here? The purpose of existence. Um, how do I come about to be a person? Why do I have to go through what I have to go through? Why is everybody different? Have you ever thought of that kind of a, of a, a metaphysical question? Physical is whatever is physical, it's whatever you enjoy. But the physical is something beyond the average intelligence. When you trigger that thought with that kind of a thought, you, you are on your way to be wiser than a lot of people who only absorb in daily pleasures. There are people who are like that. If you go to a, to, to a liquor store, you have people standing right at the liquor store begging for five dollars to have a drink. In their mind, what is the purpose of life? They don't even think about the purpose of life. They just want to satisfy their senses by having that bottle of whiskey. <laughs> when you ask these questions, I'm glad. Because you, you're on your way to be wiser. Because you are, you, are, you are on your way to understand the meaning, the meaning of life. If you're in search of the meaning of life, you already have elevated yourself to a higher level. Because in the process of seeking the meaning, you already learn how to, how to what? How to manage suffering. Do you have sufferings? Do you have sufferings? If anybody say, I don't have any suffering, raise your hands. 
Do you have any? Do you have any? Um, we don't see sufferings. Do you have any mental affliction? You know what mental afflictions are? Sometimes you're jealous. Sometimes you're greedy. Sometimes you are ignorant. Sometimes you are um, arrogant. Sometimes you are depressed. Sometimes you have fear. Sometimes you have anxiety. What are those? Apart from actual physical sufferings, we also have many, many, many mental disorder, mental afflictions. Do you realize that? If you don't realize that, raise your hands. Everybody realize that. You realize that. How come you don't do anything about it? How come you don't explore more into it to find the meaning of life? If everything, every day you're eating the same breakfast, every day you're eating the same lunch, it does not matter what kind of lunch. You go to a good restaurant, have a good lunch, go to a, a, a McDonald, you have a McDonald lunch. But if life is just going through the free meals and having fun, and then you died, what's the meaning of life, really? Have you ever pondered about it? If you started to ponder about it, you are going on this higher level. The Buddha started to ponder about it at very early age. When the Buddha, he was a prince, Siddhartha Gautama, he enjoyed all the luxuries of life in the palace. Think about you are, you are, you are always in pursuit of luxuries of life. You always want a Shaughnessy house. You always want to drive a, a, a Mercedes Benz, a Rolls Royce. You always want the best of everything. So what? When you get a Rolls Royce, you have a higher desires. When you get a sonnet to house, you have a higher desires. When you have $10 million, you want 120. When you only have $5 in your bank account, oh, and if I have 5,000, that would be better. When you have 5,000, you want. If I have 50,000, if I have 5 million, unending, insatiable desire that would not satisfy your desires. So is human just, are we just, in pursuit of physical pleasure satisfaction or in pursuit of a stimulation of our hormones. Yeah. You know what I mean by stimulation of hormones? Our hormones have always been stimulating, stimulated by ex external stimuli. Um, you don't know about that. You said, sir, what's the, the fairy time for Victoria? You're already there because you started to inquire about it. You want to go to Victoria. You start to inquire about the time, the schedules, where it is, the location, and all that. And why do you want to go there? But some, part, some people, they don't even have the wisdom to think about it. They just submerge themselves in samsara, life and death. And then they died. But in the process of waiting for death, there are lots of sufferings that you have to go through. What are these sufferings? Aging, sickness, and what else? Departure from beloved ones, living with hated ones, always to have these desires that you cannot fulfill. You want good health, you have a lot of money, you want good health, but your, your health fails you. You have, you have health, but you don't have money. There's always something that you want and you don't have. You have all the money in the world. You may not be happy. Look at those reports from, from the mass media, from Google or whatever, and, 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 and ask questions of rich people on earth. Are they happy? You're always looking for, for money, right? They have lots of money, but you ask them, are they happy? When the wise people look at them, they enjoy luxuries only, but they are not happy. They could say, yes, happiness is just in the satisfaction of senses. If happiness is just in the satisfaction of senses, then that means all these rich people who can get luxuries, they are happy. But they actually, how happy are they? I can go on and on on this kind of questions. I don't know where to, where to end. But then, um, 
what is the purpose of life? If the purpose of life, if I just, it's very difficult to, to, to give a straightforward answer. If I say purpose of life is look for the meaning of life, the meaning, what's the meaning of life? In the process of looking for meaning, you have a lot of elevations in life. You learn how to endure sufferings. You, don't, you know how to help others to endure sufferings. You, are how, you would learn how to tackle and manage your own mental afflictions. If you're a young, young person, there's still a lot you have to confront about. It's time to wake up. It's time to think about life. You have enjoyed a lot already. It's time to think about spiritually what life is all about. And uh, maybe let me introduce you to a, th a very thin book that is not even religious. It's called Man in Search of Meaning. Man in Search of Meaning, the meaning of life. Who wrote that book? A survivor of a concentration camp in nasty Germany. He survived thousands of his comrades. He was able to survive after the war. And he came up with some very valuable experiences that he depend on to endure life, to go through the hardship, a hardship that nobody else can endure. That's a very good book, only about 50 pages. It's just about 10 bucks. <laughs> you, you can get it from, where can you get that book now? I, I forgot, where, where can you get that book? Amazon, yeah. Anybody who has read that book, raise your hand. What do you think? Is it a good book? Very good book, right? It's simple to read. It's translated from German. And it, gives, it, it triggers some thought in your mind. Men in search of meaning. Everybody is writing his own script in life. What kind of script? You know, a movie needs a script, right? Every script is different. How do you write your own script? A script of marry, play, eat, satisfaction of pleasures, and that's it? I don't want to see that kind of movies. It's boring. Do you like to see the kind of movies that's nothing but enjoyment and luxuries? Everybody is responsible for writing a good life script. You are the director. You're the script writer. You're the actor. Do a good job of our life. It's not simple. Appreciate what you've got and write out this good script. You still have a lot of time ahead of you. Write a good script for you. And that's about what I can answer in this question. There's so, so much to talk about. So read that book first. Man in Search of Meaning by Frankl, F-R-A-N-K-L. All right, so that's the first one. Second question, is Nirvana heaven? Nirvana is not heaven. Heaven is just a higher level than us. We are in the six parts of the reincarnations. We still have to go through the reincarnations. In, in our samsara, in, in, in our ocean of life and death, there are six kinds of sentient beings living in our world. The animal realm, animals. The ghost realm, the azuras realm, the heavens realm, and the humans realm. Um, and of course, the hell of victims. I mean, victims of hell. And we are just in the middle as humans. Uh, the fact that you are now human is because you have done quite a bit of causes, germinate, germinate a lot of causes that make you to become a human. Otherwise, you have been in the, it could have been in the, an animal realm um, or ghost realm. And in our, there are three planes of existence, we talk about that, three realms of existence of this sentient being universal cosmos. There's three realms of existence. We are in Kamadattu. A higher level is Rupadattu, 
and higher levels, Arubhadhatu. We just mentioned that when back at meditation. What is Kamadhatu? The world with desire and materiality, with desires for sex, for reputation, for food, for eating, for enjoyment, for stimulation of the senses. We have all kinds of desires that drive us to do what we're doing now, comically and material as Kamadhatu. At a higher world, it's Rubadhatu, is they don't have all this desire anymore, but they still have material, they still have a body. And um, at the upper, very high level, the third level, no more body left. Our, our body is a burden, you know. Our body, as we always use the analogy, is an apartment. This apartment is, is on a lease. It's a net-net lease. After 100 years, you got to leave this apartment. Some, somebody leave in five years when they're a baby, or 10 years, and some people leave at 25, 26, 30, 60. They all have different periods of lease. It's non-renewable. You can say, I want to renew the lease. I want to live in my body for another 20 years, 30 years. No. When your lease is due, you got to leave this body. I mean, according to that, that lease, you still have to upkeep it. And by the time the lease is due, you got to die. So this body is temporary. So, you say Buddhism is so wide that when you keep on talking and talking, you're being led away. I don't know where. What's my question? <laughs> Which realm is, uh, is Nirvana heaven? And in, in the Kamadhatu, there are six heavens, six levels of heavens, and, but you are still in samsara. You are just at a higher level than humans. You live maybe for thousands of years, you have a longevity of thousands of years, and we have a longevity of at the most a hundred. They have thousands of years of longevity. They are, they are sentient beings in heaven. Uh, but it's not nirvana. Nirvana is the place that is above all this life and death. No more life and death for nirvana. Nirvana is no more life and death. No more sufferings. When you are in heaven, you still have suffering. What kind of suffering? When your karmic energy qualifies you to be in heaven, it's due. You've got to come down to reincarnation again. Animals ram, humans rams, and all these different rams again. You're always in samsara. But then nirvana is always out, already out from all this life and death. No more life and death is nirvana. Let's put it very simply. No more life and death. No more mental afflictions. No more sufferings. People like to use the word eternity. Okay, eternity, if you like to use that word. But that word is not, it, it uh, has, has uh, a connotation that's uh, not exactly pure. Because eternity means forever. Nothing is forever in this world, but that, that just borrow a word from them. So which realm is pure land in the three planes of existence? The pure land, Amitabha's land, is out from the three realms of existence. It's out already. So when you die, if you can go to that realm, Jilo Sijie, if you can go to Jilo Sijie, that means you are out from life and death. To be in that intermediate country where it was created by Amitabha, Amitabha, he created a heaven for all those who departed from this world to be in there, free from suffering. But you're not the Buddha as yet in there. You still have to go there and learn. It's just like a university. You, you have to go to that university and start to learn to become the Buddha. So that is a realm that is outside the three plane of existence, which is just a temporary world, a temporary world for your immigration. And when you are in that land, Amitabha is the professor and, and Guan Yin Pusa, I will look at this for a Bodhisattva. You will gradually get into enlightenment and become the Buddha. All right, so simply, this is to answer the simple questions. Venerable, can you please give us the peacock mantra again? Yeah, the peacock mantra is very simple. Well, we can, we can chant it. Uh, maybe we'll chant it 
you follow after me and then we turn it together. So you, you put your, your, your gesticulation like that with this. This is the head of the peacock, this is the tail of the peacock, and then we start to chant because you wanted the, uh, the peacock mantra. Om Mayura Karande Swaha 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 Om Mayura Karande Swaha. So that's the mantra. That's the mantra. You can practice at home. You can even get that from YouTube. There's such a mantra in there. Why do you have to sign the mantra? You can get a lot of information from, from YouTube or from Google. And um, make sure that you join us when we, when we set up the, um, uh, the mandala practice for the, for the peacock mantra again. Uh, then you join in our ceremony uh, saying prayers for prevention of earthquakes in Vancouver. Vancouver is subject to earth, is an earthquake zone and this mantra is very effective in preventing earthquake and natural disasters. It's particularly effective in dissolving poison. So why do we get sick? Because we have poison. We have germs and bacteria inside our body. This, that's poison. So if you want to get rid of poison, that is a very effective mantra. Poison avoiding and prevention mantra. Um Mayura Granti Swaha. So if you want to be healthy and you want to get away from being poisoned in your food, you know, then um, this is a very effective mantra that you, you, you chant every day. Why do we have to chant mantra? Why does mantra become effective? Why is a sound that effective? You have to learn about it. Don't be superstitious. Oh, just chanting the mantra, the sound will do. No, why? Always ask why in Buddhist teaching. Don't just accept it. What, what is chanting? Tell me what is chanting in the modern language. What is chanting? What is what is chanting? What is was chanting? What what is chanting? Chanting is chanting meditation, right? Um Mayura Granti Swaha, Um Mayura Granti Swaha. Chanting in the modern language is what? A sound therapy. You know what sound therapy is? With ultrasound, right? Sound, when the, when the frequency of sound is all magnified, it becomes extremely powerful. Many years ago, we don't have ultrasound operation. Now, you don't need to cut the body. You just use ultrasound to break the, the, the gallbladder stone. The sound itself, when it conjure in a very high density, can peer through the hardest object. That's called ultrasound. Sound therapy is a therapy that comes back to help the producer of the sound. The most effective sound is not from machine. The most effective sound is what? From where? From the mind. It's from your own mind. That's the most, if not from a machine. Of course, right now, what is, what is ultrasound? Ultrasound is sound produced by machine. To gather the frequency together to produce a very strong strength that can break through the very hard objects. But a sound chanting from your consciousness, from your mind, if it gets repeated habitually and all the time and all the time, it's extremely powerful. It's inconceivable. You can't even imagine how powerful it is. That's what we call sound therapy. Do you believe in sound therapy? Do you believe in ultrasound? If you believe in ultrasound, it should be logically led to the idea that consciousness sound is extremely effective. That's why we are chanting with, with sutras. That's why we are chanting a mantra. That's why we are chanting nam mo mi tovo, nam mo mi tovo. You are what? Producing a sound therapy. There's a sound, a chanting meditation. A sound meditation. 
What is a silent meditation? That's a consciousness meditation. 